Yo, yo, what's up YouTube and other areas of the internet that find this video? Just wanted to say that this video is going to be about functions. Now, if you've watched this series from the beginning, you know functions. You got functions down good. But I just wanted to go in more depth, sort of how I did a video on strings, even though we talked about strings. I wanted to talk about some of the principles behind functions and why you would want to use them. But just to review, let's talk about what a function is. A function is basically a, basically you can think of it as a tool in your toolbox that does something for you. It's like, it's, don't wanna say slave, cause that sounds like really bad, <laughs> but functions basically uh, do the work for you and then you just call the function and you magically get an answer. Okay, slave was probably a pretty good use of the word. Okay, moving on into uh, the less negative part of the video. What is a function? <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, so a function, for example, we have um, printf, which is one of the simple functions we learned. Functions have these, uh, when you call them, you put these uh, curly braces, or the uh, parentheses. And uh, this, all you have to worry about is what you put in here, which is known as um, the arguments. And you don't have to worry about how printf works or what it does, as long as the output from this function is what you want, which usually if you are doing it right, it is. Because um, it's kind of like, it's an agreed upon interface in a way. The arguments, are the part you worry about, and in exchange you get an output. That is the basis of a function. And you can create a bunch of these functions to do things for you and create a library. So we've talked about you know, using the built-in functions, but we can create our own functions and we can combine them into a collection known as a library. And then at the beginning of our program, we can do an include, sort of how we do like include standard io.h or whatever it is, standard bool. Uh, we can include our library and then have a collection of tools in our toolboxes. Or uh, you can think of it as weapons in our arsenal. And in general, you could say that the idea behind functions is very dry because it stands for don't repeat yourself. Okay, um, so yeah, don't repeat yourself. Basically, if you have a piece of code that you're going to call or do multiple times, you will definitely want to use a function because that reduces errors. It reduces mistakes, logical errors. So uh, because if you were like, oh, this function's not working or this section's not working quite right, you can go modify it, but you'll have to go remember to modify it in every location that uses it. But if you have a function, all you have to do is change the function code, and as a result, it's going to, to use that code every time you call that function. You can kind of think of it like Legos, right? So these functions are Legos. Right now, we're just working with like pure plastic, and we, we are building applications using custom plastic. But it would be so much easier if we formed Legos out of this plastic, and then we just had building blocks to make our applications. It's a terrible example, it's a terrible illustration, but it works. So, for example, we could create a function factorial, and maybe something like this already exists. And basically in math, a factorial is when you take a number and multiply it by all the numbers um, lower than it. So the factorial of five is equal to five times four, times three, times two, times one. And we could manually calculate the factorial every time we need it, or we could just say factorial and pass in a five, and then this would return an integer, so we could literally use this as an integer. So for example, we could print it inside of a, a printf, like such. Now there are some general things you should understand about function design, and there's just some good rules, right? So the first thing is that you shouldn't output to the console inside of a function. So don't output. And there's one exception, 
and that exception is if you wanted to do some kind of function that would do an elaborate print, a set of prints to basically log a series of data in the console. So if you wanted to make the printing process easier, you could create a function to do that. You could just call it like output or dump variable values or whatever you wanted it to do. Um, but in, in functions that aren't specifically designed to output data, you don't want them to output data because it limits the use. You want the function to be as general as possible so you can use it in more than one scenario or scenario. Do you guys say scenario or scenario? Just curious. So don't output. That means if you, um, if you want to create a function, uh, the output would be in the calling side. So let's say we wanted to compare two variables. Let's just say we have X and Y. And we have a function like, I don't know, R equal. We'll just call it equal. And you pass in X and Y. And then you could throw this function call inside of an if statement. So if equal, and then you could print something. Um, whatever you want. You can do the print in the calling side. So the calling side is we're, we're calling this function and we're printing based on the results. Some people instead would inside of the equal function that they defined, if they're equal, they would print inside that function and say they're equal. But that means every time you use this function, even if you don't want it to print, it's still going to print they are equal. So you want to basically extract anything that's going to limit the use of the function. Another good rule is uh, you try to make the functions have one use or one function, basically. Meaning that the function, um, the name of the function should describe what it does and it should not have the word and. <laughs> it should do one thing. So if you wanted to do something like um, sort and display, instead of doing a function sort and display, you could do two functions, sort, and then another function, display, and then call one after the other, passing the results of one into the, the input of the other. So basically what I'm trying to say is that the, uh, the purpose of a function should be to solve one problem and then you should have a collection of functions to solve various problems. This also makes the, 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 uh, the use of the function more general in the sense that you can use it for more things. If you go back to the example of Legos, think of like the little square Legos. You can build like anything out of those, right? But if you just have like some huge Lego that does everything and you wanna build something a little smaller or a little bit more specific, that's not gonna work. So as your function becomes bigger, it becomes less useful. So you want smaller to the point functions that solve one task. And then you, you start to build up a library that allows you to do more complex things. So that's all I really got for you guys introducing functions. Next video, we're gonna be talking about some of the things with arguments and parameters and all that good stuff. So be sure to check out that video. Please be sure to subscribe. And also check out the uh, the crash course in the, the description below. See ya.